What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over keyword mapping for SEO and I want to get started on this video by showing you what a keyword map looks like. So this is a sample keyword map for my website Farmhouse Goals and basically when I'm creating keyword maps, the thing that I'm generally doing is I'm breaking off the types of content that I'm creating into major topics and then some of their subtopics. So basically you have a short tail keyword and all of these different long tail keywords that we're targeting. And then what you have are the pages of content or products that you're actually using to optimize for that keyword. So for example, if we come down here, one of the keywords that I'm targeting is farmhouse shelves with hooks. So if you see here, I have a product category page, so farmhouse shelves with hooks. And then I also have a blog post that goes over some different ideas, some inspiration, farmhouse shelves with hooks. So what I try to do is link these two pages together. This is the page that I wanna rank with all of the products, but I know that for this keyword, I have a page on my website that is geared towards the actual search intent of a potential customer. So when someone's searching farmhouse shelves with hooks, they're generally looking for products for sale. In addition to products for sale, I also have an information page. So if we come over to my website, farmhouse goals real quick, the page that I would like to rank for this keyword on my website is this specific product page. So on this product page, all you're going to find are different farmhouse style shelving units that have hooks on them or something to hang whatever it may be jackets keys hats backpacks whatever so if you scroll down this page you can see all the different products we have for sale so clearly this page is completely geared towards farmhouse shelves that have hooks i also have a page on my website which is more informational about how to use farmhouse shelves with hooks some different ideas for hanging some of the different things in your house and where to put them so what i try to do when i'm targeting keywords is for specific websites you may have a product category page for other websites or for other examples, for example, farmhouse kitchens with open shelves, that's going to be people based on search intent, people that are looking for inspiration for their own kitchen of other farmhouse style kitchens that use open shelving units. So again, coming back over to my blog here, you can see I have 20 farmhouse kitchens with open shelves. You can see it's very clear the keyword that I'm targeting for this article. And then as we scroll down here, all I have are a bunch of different kitchen ideas with open shelving units. I can always add more to this over time as well. But if we're looking at keyword mapping to start with a definition, it's the process of connecting your keyword research with your content creation. So basically when you're creating a keyword map, you're assigning keywords to pages on your website. These are the keywords that we are targeting with this page on our website. And what you're trying to do is not just target keywords, but solve for search intent based on what people are typing in. So the page of content on your website is trying to solve for search intent. What you want to do is create an organized list of keywords you're targeting. And then you want to also link together the content that you've created for those SEO keywords. It becomes very helpful because as you're trying to target new keywords coming back over here, so let's just say I want to target keywords like farmhouse laundry room shelves, farmhouse shelves above fireplace. These could also be things just like this farmhouse kitchens with open shelves where I put together 20, 30 different designs, write a blog article about some different ideas that people can use. And then we publish that blog article and it will help us start ranking for some of these keywords with search volume. If we scroll down here for farmhouse sinks, you can see down here, I have a few more ideas, laundry room, ceramic, and then a couple of specific brands where maybe I can target those specific brands as well, much better on my website than I'm currently doing. So coming back over to keyword mapping, the main questions that you really need to ask yourself is have you mapped pages of content to your keyword list? It could also be pages of products. So whether it's a product category page or whether it is some type of blog post, that's really what you want to be mapping to your targeted keywords. You can also link individual product pages to a keyword list if it's a very popular product. The other thing is, are you targeting one SEO keyword with multiple pages? So the reason why you wanna do keyword mapping is because you can organize your content that you've already created and by making sure that you don't target the same keyword multiple times, you can avoid keyword cannibalization and you can op also optimize multiple pages of content into just one page of content. So for my website, Farmhouse Goals, I know that when people are typing in these keywords, just based on all of the research I've done and the way that traffic comes to my website, these product category pages are going to be much more likely to rank than these blog post pages. So with the blog post, what I'm essentially trying to do is look to capture people that are looking for more of the ideas of some different types of products they can buy. Whereas for these, when somebody is searching for a cast iron farmhouse sink, I want to put them on a page on my website where they can browse through all sorts of different cast iron farmhouse sinks for sale. 
So hopefully that makes sense when you're starting to create your keyword map and it can vary based on the types of content that you're creating. So coming back over here, a few different things that is some benefits of keyword mapping really are you'll have a list of keywords that you need to create content for. So I'll show you an example of that in a second. It's also much easier to keep track of your topic clusters. So last but not least, keep track of pages that you need to update and improve. So if we come over to my next slide here, this is the basic look of a keyword map. I'm targeting the keyword LinkedIn ads. Here is the URL on my Surfside PPC blog for LinkedIn ads. I'm targeting the keyword LinkedIn ads targeting, and I'm basically targeting every variation of that keyword as well. So it might be LinkedIn ads targeting options, LinkedIn ads job post targeting, LinkedIn ads degree targeting, LinkedIn ads education targeting, whatever people may be searching, that is essentially what I can try to target within my advertisements. And you can see here, instead of saying, okay, we're gonna have one page on our website that targets LinkedIn ads and everything's gonna go on this page, what I can do is basically segment all of these different keywords into different blog posts. And then within my main page, I can target some of these other keywords as well while also linking to these different pages. So let's come back over to my keyword map and let's open up the keyword map that I have for my LinkedIn ads, articles, and videos. So I'm currently trying to increase my 100 day clicks, 100 day impressions from Google search console for any keywords to my website that contain LinkedIn. So organic search traffic to my website that contain the keyword LinkedIn, whether it's any of these different variations, any of this different keyword research that I've done. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating pages of content and I'm also creating YouTube videos. And then over here on the right side, I have make sure everything is linked. So this is one way that you can do a keyword map. If you look at my farmhouse goals keyword map, sometimes I'll put these keywords that I need to target or pages that I need to improve with a red background so then I know, okay, this is work that I need to do to improve the content on my website. So coming back over to our LinkedIn keyword map. One of the things that I recently completed was my LinkedIn ads conversion tracking blog article. I still have some work to do on it, but I just published the blog article. And I also have a YouTube video for LinkedIn ads conversion tracking. So what I can do, come over to my blog article, so surfsidepcc.com slash LinkedIn ads conversion tracking. Pretty obvious what I'm targeting. And that's how all your pages should be. So you have URLs that are very easy to link together with your keywords. Now there's my Surfside PPC URL. And if we come over here, we scroll down. I also have uploaded a YouTube video for this as well. So we're gonna come over here and go to our LinkedIn ads conversion tracking 2023 tutorial, copy this URL as well, and then paste this right next to it. The reason that you wanna create a keyword map, it's so much easier to organize your content in this way by having a keyword list and then putting here is where I've covered that keyword. And here is why I'm going to rank for that keyword because I've created a really helpful blog article. I've created a very helpful YouTube video around that keyword. And I've done it for all of these subtopics within LinkedIn advertising. So that's essentially my goal when it comes to search engine optimization. It becomes much easier when you actually organize your content and organize your keywords by the things that you've already created. So I have the other website that I've been working on. It's a drawing website. So what I've kind of done for this website is I've put things into, again, the same thing, basically a topic cluster. It's just essentially a topic that I'm targeting, how to draw fruit. I list out 30 different fruits here. Actually, I have 40 different fruits here. And then as I draw each, or as I create each individual blog post, what I can do is go over to my website. So you can see I have papaya right here. Go over to my website, drawadvisor.com, and you can see my fruit drawing tutorials. Right now I have 19 different posts. So if we scroll down, you can see I have all of these different posts here. Over time, it will help me rank for these different keywords because it'll show, okay, this website here has 40 different tutorials about how to draw different types of fruit in addition to a page, how to draw fruit. So it makes it much easier to organize your content. And that's the whole reason you want to create a keyword map. We'll copy this link address since I've already published this blog post updated here. And now we can move on to the next keyword that we're targeting, how to draw pairs. So very simple look at how to organize your content. Make sure you're creating keyword maps. And what you can do is as you're doing your keyword research, so let's open the Google Keyword Planner real quick. Okay, and in here I have how to draw birds. So again, start with a, start with some type of topic that you wanna rank for. How to draw birds, 18,000 monthly searches here. But really, if I'm gonna rank for how to draw birds, I need to go over all of these different popular bird types, parrots, crows, doves, hummingbird. So if we come over to my keyword map here, how to draw birds, basically when I'm doing keyword research, I'll just come over here and say, okay, how to draw parrots, how to draw crows, how to draw hummingbirds. 
and I do have a page on my website for how to draw hummingbirds. So what I can do is basically just copy that, copy and paste that URL here. So then I know what blog posts I've already created. It's the whole point of a keyword map. So if you have any questions about any of this, basically what you're trying to do is when you're creating keyword research, try to organize your keyword research into topics and subtopics, short tail keywords and long tail keywords. And then what you can do is as you are creating content, you link that specific page to the keyword that you're targeting. And now there are going to be examples. So if we come over to my LinkedIn example, one last time here, there are going to be examples over here where you see very similar keywords that basically have the same search intent. So what you don't wanna do is, if we take something here like LinkedIn lead gen ads, lead gen form LinkedIn, LinkedIn lead gen form, I would consider these all essentially the same keyword. So what I've done is over here on the left-hand side, I have a keyword over here that just says LinkedIn ads lead generation. So basically when I'm writing my blog post about LinkedIn ads lead generation, I will again do keyword research and come right in here and say, just something very simple, LinkedIn lead, LinkedIn ads lead generation. So enter a few different keywords that you know you're gonna be targeting within this article, some different long tail keywords. So LinkedIn advertising leads, LinkedIn ads lead forms. Okay, so if I do those keywords, I click on get results. What you're going to see is the highest keyword is going to be LinkedIn lead generation, but that isn't necessarily about advertisements. If we're looking at overall search volume for LinkedIn lead generation type keywords, basically on a monthly basis, we're looking at 5,000 to 6,000 searches. If we scroll down here, what you can do is we have 187 keyword ideas available. Take out a lot of these different keywords that are going to be worth covering within your blog article. And you may even find some keywords like this, Dripify LinkedIn, LinkedIn B2B lead generation, lead generation strategy, agency ads. So you're going to see some different ideas here and you may see specific products that come up. It may be worthwhile actually covering some of these different products and just going over, here is how to use a some different tools that will help you create your LinkedIn lead generation forms. So if there are tools that are helpful, you can also use your keyword research to make sure that you're targeting all of these keywords within your blog post. So you can take advantage of the monthly search volume for basically what looks like one specific keyword, but is actually 100 to 200 keywords that you're really going to be targeting. Don't jam every single keyword in your blog article, but instead kind of look for ideas within these keywords to say, okay, here's where lead generation can be helpful for B2B companies. So that's basically how I try to use keyword research. And when I'm creating keyword maps, what I'm trying to do is just take my main keyword, link it to a page, and then cover every single aspect I possibly can about that specific topic. So hopefully this has been helpful. Start creating keyword maps today if you haven't already. Much easier to create your keyword research and create content, and it will help you rank over time if you are very organized with the keywords you're targeting and the content you're creating. Thank you for watching my video today, and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.